All right, I do have to pull the rest of you, and we're running out of time here. All right, uh, Senator uh, Representative Irwin, are you for eliminating townships, yay or nay? Uh, yeah, I am, and I think that um, there are some great township supervisors here in Washington County. I work closely with Supervisor Graywall, uh, and the principle of having local control and the principle of having the voters be close to their local government is incredibly important. But I think uh, it was pointed out that the size that we're using to determine what is the appropriate size for local control is based on a standard that's more than 200 years old at this point. And uh, that's just not appropriate. So they're you know, working in local government for 10 years. I want to give the chamber, this local chamber, a lot of credit. You were pushing on us when I was at the county uh, to consolidate. And I want to give a lot of credit to uh, the county administrator, Vernon McDaniel, and the mayor was here earlier for all the work that they're doing, trying to bring together dispatch in this county. So I think that absent anything happening in Lansing, and I don't really see anything happening in Lansing on this issue because the townships are too powerful. Absent that, I think there's a lot of work here to be done locally to bring our local units together for economies of scale and efficiency. Representative, you want to get rid of townships? Well, it, as you know, we had this discussion a week ago, you and I, on, on air about this. Uh, I, my feeling has always been is, is that uh, there is a great deal of cooperation, and in, in as uh, uh, Jeff had mentioned, that particularly in Washtenaw County, we share a lot of services. And we've done that for two reasons. One, it's more cost effective and the lack of revenue is driving that. And two, it's providing a better service back to the communities. And I think if you approach it like that, instead of looking at eliminating but improving the quality of service and leveraging the tax dollars, you'll come to a natural answer. So Mr. Richardsville's legislation came to you, you would vote no. Yeah, well, it would come to me and I would vote no. All right, I appreciate but that. But he'll have some legislation coming our way, and then we'll talk about it. Yeah, then. and then ah. he'll, he'll vote no. Is there something that you would like from Mr. Richardville? Here, sit down. <laughs> uh, all right, so we got uh, on, on that. All right, we're running out of time. I want to make sure the audience has a chance to participate here. If there are any other questions, and I do want to ask of the audience, by your applause, how many people would favor the elimination of some townships? Would you applaud now? How many people would not favor that? Would you applaud? <laughs> <laughs> duly noted. <laughs> duly noted. All right, we're running out of time. I, I, I do have to ask you this. Uh, one of the questions they wanted me to ask is about the, the brain drain of our kids. Okay, we train them here at this beautiful university or in East Lansing, and then they go to wherever. Would any of you on the panel favor some sort of a tax credit? to encourage the kids to stay here, like for giving tuition or loans or anything like that. Any takers on the panel at all? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow, I got, holy mackerel, I, I'm amazed by that. Senator Richardville, that's not like you, sir. <laughs> you mean to agree with everyone or what? <laughs> Take it wherever you'd like. <laughs> no, I, you know, you're, you're right. Central Michigan University is a great example right now where they've got a medical school that they're building They've got a hundred new, um, newly being, they will be trained doctors, but they went out into the rural areas and said, who are some of your best kids that could get into med school if they, uh, you know, if they had the right opportunity? They put them into this program with the stipulation they have to go back to that community because we have a shortage of, you know, simple general practice type doctors and, and bring them back and they can pay, they, they, then they can pay that off uh, over a 10 year period of time or something like that. Those kind of programs I think are good for the state. Uh, and uh, Representative Woman, I noticed your hand did not go up, so you're in the minority here. Uh, probably, but I think what, what the point is on, on that is specific programs. I think when you talk about tax credits, you know, we've worked real hard to step away from some of those tax credits. But what, uh, what the Senator is talking about, uh, because if you look at um, uh, St. Joe's and University of Michigan, you look at people that come through those residency programs, here in the last decade, vast majority of them leave the state. And so there, we have to do something to keep the high level of, of uh, physicians in our state. Well, why not something to get them here? Well, that, yeah, and I think he, he's on But not a tax of, credit. You're uncomfortable a, yeah, with that. Yeah, not a tax credit. There's a different way of doing it. What if I could prove to you that it would work? If you prove to me it would work? Sure. Yeah, then you would. Uh, yes, Mr. Warren. You know, we were talking about uh, some ideas that, that cost money, and I think those are interesting. I'd love to talk to you about the proposal that I'm working on, which is borrowed from what they do in Australia. But assuming we don't have time for that, there are some things that we can do in Lansing that cost nothing that would help keep young people here. 
The one thing that we could do that would cost nothing that would help keep young people here is that the legislature could stop beating up on the University of Michigan for studying stem cells. Stem cell research is a good thing. It's something we want more of in this state, and we shouldn't be chasing away our best researchers and trying to frustrate our best economic development engine in the entire state by telling them not to do life-saving development of research. And I've got one more quick one. We also shouldn't be sending a message from Lansing that people who are lesbians or gays are not welcome here in Michigan. That's a bad message, and young people are not on board with that. Young people want a message of tolerance. We want to have our doors open to the world, not closed. All right, we have a question from the audience, and then a final one, please. Um, so last night, I spoke on a panel at U of M Dearborn. Sorry, I'm slipping on something. Um, about they were able, their iLab program was able to secure a grant to help educate the students there at U of M Dearborn on franchising and why franchising is a good opportunity for career growth, um, not only within the franchisor system, but also to be franchisees. And um, it, was, it was really very interesting and it's gonna be an ongoing program that they are getting funding for. And so I, I think that there, it, the, the other part of this for employers, and I think for any of you who are employers, is that they are also funding the opportunity for those same students that are learning about franchising to be able to take internships or get get um, jobs within the companies that are trying to franchise. And uh, that was really an exciting thing that, and very innovative that U of M Dearborn is doing. All right, any reaction from the panel? All right, here's the last, you know this is a Scubic interview, so it's yes or no, here we go. We'll start with you, Representative Olson. If you had to vote today on the bridge, how would you vote? Given yes or no, I would say no, but. Oy vey. See what I'm dealing with on a daily basis up in Lansing, folks. Huh? All right, a no but. All right, Representative? I know exactly how I want, would vote on it, but I don't want the governor to know right now. <laughs> so. Whisper in my ear. <laughs> so you're, uh, you're a yes vote, but you want something in return. Correct. I, I, I did the math. All right, okay. Representative? Uh, I think we definitely need a second span, and I think the state should be involved in making that That's not happen. That's yes or no. But what I'm concerned <laughs> you about noticed. is the devil's in the details with all this stuff. The devil's but in conceptually the details. speaking. And conceptually, we need a second span, but not if it's a bad deal for the public. And this public-private partnership can be structured in a million different ways, and I want to make sure that the public is protected because that's my job. Representative, if you had to vote today. Uh, that would be a yes. I've been a yes from the get-go on this because I do think it's a, an important economic development tool for our state. And your colleagues in the Republican caucus in the House who aren't there, they simply don't get this or what? Um, they come at it from a different, different position. Which yeah. is? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you ask a stupid question, you get a stupid answer, all right? Senator, please. I support the bridge. I support the community that they want to put it in, and I can't vote for the bridge if the community is not taken care of. And Senator Richardville. Well, you know it's my bill. <laughs> oh, okay. You're probably gonna vote yes. <laughs> and, and beside- but, but one thing that we did, the governor surprised a lot of people on the day of the State of the State address saying we're gonna build a second bridge. Surprised a lot Surprise would be under, you guys had no heads up at all. About 12 hours, you know. <laughs> I didn't have time to process it real well. I thought it was a good idea. I stood up and clapped. You know how they do that? And I looked out and all the people that just elected me leader were sitting down. <laughs> really lonely moment for me. Uh, but, but this is what we did. In about March or so, I said, I'm going to introduce the bill and we're gonna take control of the process. The governor was pushing hard to get it done in June. I said, no, this process should take longer. The previous administration took seven, eight years and spent millions of dollars and didn't get the job done. So if we're gonna take a few more months, so that a relatively new group of legislators can take a look at this thing and then make an informed decision, we're gonna take our time and do it right. Very good, ladies and gentlemen, round of applause for this great panel. Good job, folks.